Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the B movie anthem. <clears throat> Oh, say did you see that crappy movie on a streaming service to review for the podcast? Whose bad plot and non-stars and piss poor quality or the boobs and explosions were so dumb but Jade loved them and Chris keyboard typing all Paul's damn chair squeaking gave proof through the episode that Mike was chugging the lords. Oh, say does that be movie podcast record? Oh, the Prince of Magic and the whole. Play ball. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts. The cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hey, good evening. Welcome to a very special 4th of July edition of B-Movie Mania. My name is Paul Brooks. I'm your host for the evening. We got some video going on right now, guys. It's a very uh, exciting video special. I said I was never going to do it again, but here we are. <laughs> uh, joining me per usual is Mike Hayes. Uh, I must be awful lonely when dead. Mm. Jason Halls. Glasses? No glasses? What do you think? <laughs> glasses. <laughs> No glasses, it's glary. I can Oh yeah, down. look at I can see all of, it's like staring into infinity. All right. Ooh. And Chris Hudson. Oh, it's the sound of Robert Forrester dying. Yep. <laughs> We watched a movie tonight. Happy Happy uh, Fourth of July, everybody! Happy fireworks and happy uh, I don't know America uh, birthday, America, whatever you know. People celebrate on this day. <laughs> I'm not. It's not. It's just not one of my favorite holidays. You know. It's, Clearly, by the way you're dressed. Well, I figured you know, dress the part at least if we're going to be on video. Audio folks, thank you for listening. We always appreciate you tuning in. Uh, but feel free to stop the podcast and go watch on YouTube channel where everybody is looking at our very uh, patriotic uniforms. Chris, I appreciate you wearing the Cobra Kai headband because there's yes. nothing more pa- patriotic than violence. That's true. That's what I always say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we watched a movie, guys, that is very appropriate <laughs> for um, the 4th of July special. It makes a lot of sense that we're doing this movie. It's called Uncle Sam. It was uh, directed by William Lustig and written by the great Larry Cohen, 
Um, Wonderful man. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, obviously, we know him from The Stuff. Q, The Winged Serpent. What else? Bone. Well, Lustig did all the Maniac Cops. Yeah, he wrote all... Well, well lo, but but Cohen wrote all the Maniac Cops as well. <laughs> yeah. Pardon. It's a, it's a partnership made in... Well, somewhere. Yeah. It's a live... It's a live franchise Cohen created, wrote and directed those. Yes. Uh, he, he's got he's got an interesting history. Started in black exploitation stuff and, like, went on and did a bunch of social commentary movies, really. Yeah. Jay, uh, what's going on with your shirt there? Is that the Declaration of Independence? You know it. Mm. You want to read about freedom? Yeah. Take a look. There it is. And let me just... I just want to remind our viewers and our listeners right now that, you know, today is the 4th of July, and these colors do not run, okay? Just a little public service announcement for everybody out there in case... Anyone thought that the colors did run? They do not. Right here. My, my pink tie-dye shirt did run a bit. Oh. When the, when the, in the wash. Yeah, and while you mentioned it, my, my Iron Maiden concert t-shirt seen better days, too. So, yeah. mm, mm. Quick takes. <laughs> da, 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 da. Quick takes. Chris, you ever been to Kuwait? No. <laughs> mm, okay, just checking. Uh, uh, Chris, what is your quick take for this movie that we watched, Uncle Sam? I don't have one, but I do plan on joining the <laughs> army in eight or nine years. <laughs> uh, just in case any of our uh, viewers or listeners are not aware, we do have a veteran here in our midst. Chris, you were in Ooh, army. I was in army. I did and not go to Kuwait. Right. You were in the Philippines? Oh, I mean, I visited. Okay. I was in Korea. For Korea. Two years. Which one, Chris? Let's be specific. Oh, uh, cra- mm. You know, it's been like 20 years. I forgot which one it was. Wow. I assume the good one because they let me come back to the United States at one point. Okay, but which one to you is the good one? <laughs> That's a great question. East, I guess. I don't know. East? East. <laughs> East. East Korea. East Korea. I guess that would be Japan, really. That's a mm-hmm. perfectly fair quick take, uh, Mike. Uh, this movie's slow, but while it is slow, it has some interesting commentary mm. about patriotism. Mm. Yes, we will get into that. Jay. Similar, a little slow, but I would say Star Spangled Fun. Mm. <laughs> Damn it, that's a good one. Very How about nice. you, Paul? I don't do quick takes anymore on my own episodes. Well, this is so, special. Ow. Just, just, yeah, we don't get a special quick take from Paul? Uh, all right. Well, I did, you know what? I did have a intro that I was going to do before the uh, idea of the B-movie anthem came up. I hope, I hope everybody it. enjoyed Let's that. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Take a good look at me, maniacs. You made me into this. I don't know. <laughs> it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I like it. That works for a quick take, too. <laughs> Take a good look at me, soldier. You, you made me into this. All right, guys, let's get into it. Uncle Sam, Mike, I'm wondering if you can help me out a little bit here with the sure. uh, the family dynamic in this movie is, to me, maybe a little bit confusing. There's a lot going on here. So can you can you help me break this down a little bit with some of the characters that we have in this thing? Well, Paul, we got a small sissy child who wants to be an army raised by two women. Not a classic standard American family. That's for sure. What, uh, what's with the drill sergeant what? voice all of a sudden? I don't know. I was He's just manly. trying to sound like an He's asshole. Being manly. Yeah, uh, I was trying to mm-hmm. be a guy. Yeah, no, well, no, it's a uh, good job, uh, Mike. Good job. Thank you. Thank I you. believed it. Uh, a woman and her her child uh, live together. <laughs> the woman's sister is around a lot. Um, the woman's sister husband recently died via friendly fire in Kuwait. Friendly fire. Um, no, wait, hold on, Mike. Hold on, hold fire. on. The woman's sister, sister-in-law. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was Sam's wife and Sam's sister. 
Yeah. I think. Wait, they're not related? No. no. See, it's confusing. They also they look, look exactly the alike. Same. Yeah, I, I, I know. Didn't That's help why that they, so they <laughs> cast two people that looks very similar. This okay, bad so casting. okay, so they're so they're not they're sisters, but not by blood. Sister in law. True. Sister in laws. Yes. Yeah. Not and step sisters, then, not step siblings, <laughs> sister in laws. And and then there's other families involved in this, like the couple and their child who can see the future or something. He's psychic. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's a different family He's though. Psychic blind child. I'm talking I'm talking about the main family here. You got Jody, right? Mm-hmm. Is the main kid in the movie. In eight or nine years, I'll be able to enlist. I bet you can't wait. Nice to have met you, soldier. Although PJ Souls looks a lot like Jody's mom and aunt. Which one is PJ Souls? <laughs> the wheelchair kid's mom. Oh, okay. I'm talking about <laughs> the main family in the movie. You got Jody, and then you got Jody's mom, and uh-huh. then you and then you got um, jo- Jody's uh, aunt. Jody's, Jody's mom's brother's wife. Right. <laughs> and then... Or widow. Uh, Jody's mom is going out with a guy, because you never see Jody's dad, really, right? True. Do yeah, we know right. what, like, what, where Jody's dad is? I don't think they ever said. Kuwait, probably. I don't think they did. They explained a lot of family dynamics but they, and, like, family history, but I don't think they did talk about that. No. Yeah. You know, it just goes huh. to show that dads aren't really that important to the family. Master Sergeant Sam Harper. And then uh, and we haven't mentioned uh, Sam Harper is the titular Uncle Sam, really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And he's dead. He died in the Iraq War. In first Kuwait, one. first the first Iraq yeah. War, the first one, right? Like the first, the one we call the first one. It looks more like a midwestern field, but Kuwait. <sighs> Friendly fire, Sergeant. I don't want to hear that crap. These things happen in war. Sam was uh, killed, wounded. Something, but they find him. Well, not just anybody finds him, Jay. William Smith finds him. William Smith, okay, real quick. This is a thing. You have William Smith in there. He sounds like he eats rusty nails. (laughs) I was hoping. I had not seen this film. I had not seen Uncle Sam before. I Ah. was hoping that this was the Uncle Sam. I was was hoping that one of the marathons. Huh? I picked this movie for one of the. 24 I hour probably slept through that. We don't, we don't remember Eight years ago. I don't remember that. I, don't, I can't <laughs> hold someone to that. Come on. <laughs> I drank through it or slept through it. He was also in Get Even. Yeah, mm, that I didn't know. Yeah, but so so you've got him, right? I wanted him to be Uncle Sam, but he wasn't. I mean, he lasts not... Or William Smith could have been the 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 military guy that goes and delivers the bad news to the family who sticks around for the whole movie. You right. had him. He sounds great. He looks great. I I feel like that was a missed opportunity not to use him. But so uh, Sam turns on the soldiers, shoots them, and presumably sort of dies there. And they ship his body back to the United States to be buried in his small hometown with his family. What's his the, one-liner, Jay? What's his one-liner? William Smith's? No, the Uncle Sam's when he friendly fires William Smith. I don't remember the line. Paul, can you add it in? <laughs> don't be afraid. It's only friendly fire. So... Here's my big question, because I watched this movie twice in preparation for the podcast. I've seen it numerous times prior to this, even going back to the days of, you know, just going to the video store and like, you know, renting something. Sweet lenticular cover. Yeah, Mike has the lenticular somewhere. Do you have it on you, Mike? Like on my person right now? Yeah, on your person. 
<laughs> no. Dang it. Can you what find a disappointment. it? No. God Wallet damn it. in one pocket, Uncle Sam in the <laughs> other pocket. That should be the daily. Wait, always gotta check it. If I go find it, do I have to like? Can I just come back at the end? Just go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll be gone for an hour. That's <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> listener, viewer, go to bmoviemania.com where we will post no, a I'm photo not... down below nope, of Mike not with doing his it. lentic. Why not? Because it's in a fucking pile of VHS tapes. I'm not going to dig through that. <laughs> most of those like are mine. I have 600 VHS yeah, tapes. Yeah, most I know, of them are mine. Take them away from me. I Why will. Just get, a, just get a Google image and send it to him and tell him that's yours. <laughs> yeah, Photoshop it on me, Paul. <laughs> Hold up any VHS tape, Here. Mike, and I will Photoshop. <laughs> not now. God damn it. No. <laughs> All right, there we're done is. here. There so here's here's my big question. Hey, wait. Paul, hold on. You want to see mine? I got it, too. Here. No. <laughs> Jay's got it, too. Look, Joe I got my own copy. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, look, here's Chris, mine. You got yours? Oh, let's I see. Do. What's, it's what's right here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I do have something from the film, if I may show it. I have a prop from the film. There's Ooh, a part what? early on where Jody is playing with toys <laughs> in the backyard, you know, his army mm. tanks and stuff, mm -hmm. and one of his little tanks runs over Destro, from ah yes, GI Joe, right? Well, I'd like to present to you Destro. Destro. <laughs> uh, That's G Uncle Sam, right this there. Is Uncle Sam, this is the the Destro that yep. Jody rolled over, J and unfortunately, you can see what happened to him. The tank treads just cut him in half, Oof. and I bought this on eBay for twelve hundred dollars, and this sits on my desk. Ralph, you're dead. What is Uncle Sam's deal? Why <laughs> is he... What... Did I miss something? Like, why is he still alive? It's the magic it's of patriotism. Because of friendly fire. I will I will tell you from a from army standpoint what their deal really is. Oh, please, yes. Inside information. Yes. So, his nephew... His nephew's name is Jody. Right? Right. Jody is actually the name of the person who steals your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, parents, dog, whatever, away from you while you're on deployment. So this, when you're in is, Kuwait or Korea. This is a real military, this is military a real thing, term. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jody is the person who bangs your wife, boyfriend, husband, whoever. Dog. Well, you said dog. Could dog. Be the one who bangs could, your yeah, dog. Probably. I now, don't know. Chris, people are in the military. Weird, weird is fond of acronyms. Is is Jody an acronym for anything? No. Or nope. No. Just that's the name. Just, that that's was just the name. Yep. Oh. Jack off doing your wife. Your wife. Sounds sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of things in the military aren't really explained. There's just tradition. Well, Chris, I appreciate that little, you know, insight but into army. It it well. Here's the, the reason I say that because Uncle Sam is pissed off that his nephew's name is Jody. That he, you know, his the rage fills his corpse, and he just can't he just can't stop killing. Okay, he does say he comes back for Jody. Yeah, that's probably why. I came back for you. You are the reason I'm here. At one point in time, Jody says, I'll do whatever the president says to do <laughs> because he knows better. So oh Jody has drank Kool-Aid from the womb. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I don't know, Mike, I don't know if you want to talk right now about, you know, your thoughts on what this movie is trying to say. I found it pretty interesting um, that in 1996, a movie like this might come out. You know, the, on the surface kind of seems like a goofy horror movie, but kind of has like this weird anti-war, almost anti-America message to it. It's it's a lot. It's, it is a bit of a surprise, but also not because well, a good horror movie does have a message. True. Like, there is a reason behind a horror movie. Any horror movie that's just about the killing is a little less fun, at least in my brain. But True. a lot of horror is is because of something you can identify with. And that's what this is. It's a lot of. Talks about the patriotism and like the the blind patriotism is what it is. Like it's Jody's the perfect example of like a a blind like you said, Jake drinks Kool Aid from the womb. Just 
the president knows best, I'll do whatever he says kind right. of a thing. When I'm grown up, I'm going in the army. Just like Sam did. And I'll do whatever the president says to do. Because he knows better. If you think of Uncle Sam as embodying American values, what is more American than indiscriminately killing innocent people? And other soldiers. Okay. Yeah. And civilians and anyone who gets in your way. Yeah. You look at look at all mm-hmm. the stories of, of American soldiers in other occupied territories. They're just murdering villages of people. I think you know, we like, just lost a huge of chunk of our audience with that statement. Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of fucking <laughs> Vietnam vets. I just that. don't think I don't think it was as clear as it could have been. I don't think. Oh no, it was wasn't a perfectly written yeah. script, but I think it was. That's the that was the that could be the point. Not to be unclear, but the point was uh, the blind patriotism, the anti-war. It's a lot like Ernest in the army. Sure, <laughs> um, I can. See, I definitely see the the de- the dangers of blind patriotism. That I think yeah. is clear. But but Paul laughed. But genuinely, the uh, in the army, Ernest, whatever it's fucking called, is this movie that has this wildly weird subversive plot that's anti the Iraq War, the uh, anti Desert Storm. It's so ingrained in the movie, it's fucking wild. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think I've seen that one. I'll have to check it out. I. It's not great, but I recommend it. Okay. <laughs> Solely for the political message in that film. You were right. It is called In the Army, Ernest. In the army. <laughs> um, yeah. Chris, let's talk a little bit about Isaac Hayes Hayes's character in this movie because I actually thought for uh, I don't know if you guys remember he kind of turned out to be a little bit of a dum dum towards the end of his life. Uh, probably mm-hmm. everybody remembers the famous mm-hmm. South Park uh, <clears throat> stuff on him and everything, but I actually thought he did a pretty good job. In this movie, he plays uh, uh, another, you know, war vet. So kind of, Chris, talk about his character a little bit and sort of like how it relates to the whole Uncle Sam situation well, here. Well, he was Uncle Sam's uh, friend, mentor, what have you. Uh, he apparently fought in the Korean War at the age of 11. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, and, and taught Uncle Sam that, you know, to be a soldier, that that's what he wants, should be. He should join the army and be a killer or something, I guess, and he really regrets that. Unfortunately, I feel his head full of tales of glory. How we moved up from the beach and took those Korean buckers out. But the most important thing about his character that completely, I was so thrilled when it paid off in the end, is that he has a prosthetic leg. Yes, we are introduced to the prosthetic leg during uh, Sam's, I guess... What would you call this? This was a His little wake. bit weird to me. I guess a wake, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have to worry about termites. I'm kidding. No, I ain't kidding. Tell you what. Wrap on it if you like. It won't hurt me. Go on. I heard it got blown right off. Landmine. Is this the part where they have like the awesome shot where the camera is on top of the coffin and they unload the the uh, the coffin oh, yeah. out of yep. the car? A nice so. slow yeah. motion, like it's a great shot, great <laughs> shot. You know, that's there's this movie, Mike. You said that you said it in your quick take. This movie is very slow. You know, the pacing of this movie is it really takes its time with everything. And Jay, there's some shots in in this thing that are very. Good, but odd. There's like slow mo shots of like a close up of a of a bicycle chain, hmm. as Jody is riding his bike, and there's this POV casket shot as it gets wheeled into the house. Uh, nice to look at, I guess, but a little bit weird for a, a direct to video type of movie like this. No. I mean, I don't know. I think they just had a, a cool vision with it. I I, I was kind of surprised how serious they played the whole movie. To be honest, I think you're right, you're right. It is weird, Paul, that that you see this in a like direct to video thing, but it really shows the weight of the film. Like the POV of the casket really puts you in the in the position of the corpse, 
as, as you're wheeling into the home of your loved ones. And the bicycle chain really, I think, symbolizes and really gets you to feel the gears chugging that Jody is really wanting oh. to be a part of just the machine, the, the green machine, you know, just to get in there. He wants to, he wants to rip up some shit, you know, and that really, really helps you get in to the heads of these characters. You see, mm. I disagree with all of you. I think it's just there <laughs> to, to get us used to that really weird final shot. <laughs> Before I pee, let's talk about mm-hmm. my favorite scene in the movie, okay. which yeah. is which is <laughs> Uh, a pervert on stilts. Uh, <laughs> which is great, which is the origin story of the look of Uncle Sam. <clears throat> yeah. Which is kind of fun. <laughs> Did you guys see the outtake after the credits with this guy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listeners, viewers, if you are watching this film on Tubi.tv, if you oh. haven't already watched it yet, make sure <laughs> this is before post credit scenes were really a thing, but make sure that you stay after the credits for uh, a very difficult thing to watch. Well, Paul, tell us, walk us through this pervert scene and why you love this pervert. So I love much. this. Per- well, I mean, Abe. <laughs> I love this pervert. <laughs> a, an Uncle Sam guy on stilts out of nowhere, just out of nowhere, you know, just like this dolly, this like panning back dolly shot to like this girl in her bathroom. Just peeping on this girl. Again, it's 1996, so there's a little bit of uh, nudity in this film. Yeah, his attempt pays off for his all attempt, of us. His attempt, well, his attempt pays I mean, off. If if you freeze framed it, there's there's effectively <laughs> there's no nudity in this. You know, I did read that that woman agreed to do nudity only if she got to keep one of the Uncle Sam masks that they use in the movie. <laughs> I, I hope you're not lying. Oh, I, I'm, it's, I, no, I'm not. Like, that's what I read. I don't know if it's true. Wow. But. Wow. Well, all right. So that's my favorite scene in the movie. Now, um, let's talk about, as I go to the bathroom here, let's talk about what happens in the aftermath because he, he runs off and then, guys, uh, whoever wants to handle this, Uncle Sam, our real, you know, titular Uncle Sam, kind of starts to go on a little bit of a rampage here with some of the uh, it's, with the stilt boy and some of the other kids in town. There's yeah. so many layers to this. Yeah. Onion, it's just a Uncle big Sam onion. inside of Uncle Sam doing Uncle Sam things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, go do yeah. it. It's a lot of killing. It is There's a lot of killing. Oh wow! Look at Paul. Paul's image has been replaced by an image of Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, wow. yeah. Huh. I, I heard that. Wow. I heard that. Very cool. I like Macho Man. <laughs> These are Macho right, Man glasses. So, so. so that's, a, that's an okay uh, thing to say. Uncle Sam kills other Uncle Sam. <laughs> pervert Uncle Sam with hedge trimmers. And, mm-hmm. and fashions an outfit yeah. for himself. He's got, can we just talk about Uncle Sam's like tailoring skills with those shears? <laughs> Pretty great. Oh well, let's what, yeah. first. Let's ask Macho Man if if he wants to talk about that. <laughs> All right, cool. Go on, Chris. He said yes, of course. Yeah, yeah he just like because these pants are like twenty feet long, and Uncle Sam just tailors the shit out of them to yeah to fit him, and it looks good. It's like yeah. a fitted suit. It's like tailored just to his zombified corpse. Well, we all knew he had a mean streak. <laughs> That's it. He just gets it. He's got a weird, really creepy mask. Like the mask is like, is a it's a bad mask in the sense of, do you if if you were wearing it, it just it looks, it looks super like a mask. Now the information may be out there, and I just have not run across it. But do you think 
the inspiration for this movie was just saying, let's just take Halloween and put it on the 4th of July. Because there are some similarities, you know? Mm. It's it's mm-hmm. the mask guy. Lee Curtis. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but Michael Myers can walk around in broad daylight on Halloween because everyone just assumes he's in costume, right? So this is one of the only other movies, horror films, I can, I can think of off the top of my head where the killer can just move among everybody yeah. during the day because oh. nobody nobody realizes that he he appears to be part of the show. Oh, and he's got that supernatural movement kind of thing because the one kid in the sack yep. race is going through the orchard and Uncle Sam's in a clearing. Mm-hmm. Yep. He kind of like hops along to the next clearing. There he is again, hops a yep. little more, and Uncle Sam's right in his face. Nice costume. Can you help me find my way back to the road? Who the hell are you? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Like, the, yeah, what was it? Yeah, Halloween, The Fugitive, you know, like the horror movies that, you know, people can walk around in daylight. Yeah. You know, Dr. Richard Kimball is one of the most terrifying. <laughs> the Fugitive? Most, most terrifying <laughs> villains I've ever witnessed. Well, broad daylight, this guy's walking through a parade. Like, he was innocent. Fuck? He was framed. Spoilers. I don't care. Like, yeah, I mean... one-armed man? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can tell you guys what my favorite death of the movie is, since oh, Paul's yeah. evidently really taking his time with Demon. That's a long pee. Hey. He's probably pissing in Uncle Sam's grave. Let's see. Let's see if we'll you never guys see him again. Long pee. <laughs> 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 my favorite kill of the movie was Robert Forrester. So Uncle Sam, at this point in time, is being fairly indiscriminate with who he's getting a hold of. Uh, you know, it's the kid who pushes people over in a sack race. It's the sheriff. It's it's some douchebag lawyer guy who helps people get out of taxes, um, you know, and then he takes the congressman and straps him up to all of the fireworks display and lights all of it up the fireworks. all of them and they and they hit the fireworks button and he just goes boom <laughs> i would argue that another missed opportunity is not using robert forrester enough mm. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. just not that much of him. They didn't use Eric Roberts either, like, at all. Where was no. he? <laughs> he's not, yeah, he's not even in the film. What the he hell? He was there. Would, would have been great. You could have got him. It mm-hmm. may, ha- may may be a money issue, Jay. I mean, I don't know. This, this movie yeah. could not have been cheap to make, but maybe two they mil. could only get two million. Yeah, I mean, Robert Forrester and William Smith are probably like, hey, let's get them for a day or two, you know. Well, actually, that both of their parts were probably only one day shoots, I would imagine. So it's like, Together. let's get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get that so we can put them on the DVD, have some names in the movie, you know, but like probably couldn't afford them for the entire shoot. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. very true, but it it's a shame. Take a look here. Glasses? No glasses. No glasses. Uh. This is called a freedom of speech beer. Ooh, that's a no. good one. Yeah. Freedom of peach. Freedom of peach, Paul. Hold on. <laughs> let me hold it up to your camera, Mike. See that? Oh, they wow. Add, oh, uh, it, they're spelling it that way. Yeah. 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 That's they spell it like so it's peach. It's a good one, though. It's a good one. I think, yeah. Freedom Just drink in Chicago here, buddy. Peach. Yeah. yeah, this is from Revolution Brewing in Chicago. Uh, it says <laughs> session sour ale with peaches and mm-hmm. I have no idea if I'm going to like this, but I am going to hold oh, up. It's a, everybody, everybody, it's a shut, everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. Wait, wait, Paul, wait, what? Everybody shut up. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Didn't mean to be rude. Mm, let's hear you sip it. Yeah. Get a good slurp in slurp there. Slurp it up. Nice long pull. Mmm. Oh, that is delightful. Right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it wow. good? That's a good one. Next Holy on B Movie Beer Reviews. Mm-hmm. 
That that teenager does not know how to cook a good slab of ribs. Well, let's set wow. let's set the scene for everybody, shall we? Okay. I mean, because this is a pivotal scene in the film. Yeah. With the, the <laughs> whole the most important scene, <laughs> the whole second act, or no, it just all pivots the meat around chop. country time lemonade in a glass jar. <laughs> Mike, you wanted to all talk right. about this for ten minutes. I'm gonna. And I'm, uh, yeah, all I'm right. holding you to Start it. Start the timer. Timer's right up there. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So, a young woman is working on some ribs and some brisket and all this kind of stuff, and she's really doing a good job. She's pounding away at that meat, uh, just pounding wow, the meat Wow, that real came good. out wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and she's just slurping back a classic 90s glass jar <laughs> that all, of, all beverages in the 90s came in. Like, you want a Snapple? Glass jar. You want a Country Time Lemonade? Glass jar. You want a Coca-Cola? Same type of glass jar. It was all the same. We had the same glass jars. And I just, I, I saw that and I just had a flashback of sitting on the golf course watching my grandpa drink some Budweiser's, smoke some Lucky Strikes. Well, I had a hot dog and a Snapple strawberry kiwi drink and it was, it was just the, you know, that's what, that's when life was good. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's mainly about the glass jar more than the country time. Yeah, well, the, mostly the glass jar is like because country time lemonade you could probably get it in Aldi still or something. Uh, yeah, and in like the big cardboard tube, but like man, it's just the old logo, and you know maybe Gramps is like, go over there and putt while I talk some shit with these guys. Don't listen to them; they're a <laughs> bunch of fucking peasants. And like you know whatever, but you know whatever our Gramps would always say about people he was around, Mike, you know whatever. Mike, but. I have to apologize for doom scrolling on my phone for a few minutes while you told that heartwarming story of a better time. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Well, you you're know, welcome, Mike. It's it's funny that you mentioned that actually because hmm. um, I I essentially picked this movie right for our July Fourth special. I said, guys, how how do you feel about maybe doing a a July 4th special this year. And the reason that I picked this movie was, in fact, for those same sort of good, good, you know, the good old day type feeling of Country Time Lemonade? Not, not Country Time Lemonade mm. so much, but more of American going Killers. into... Not so much American <laughs> Killers, but going into the video Ribs. store, you know... <laughs> And a movie Ribs. fan here in Normal, Illinois, if you guys remember the movie fan. Nope. Um, I do. Going in and, you know, renting a movie. Maybe you rent Uncle Sam back in the day when the shit was real. Maybe you don't, but you're certainly passing by it. At I some believe point. that's where I rented it for the very first time. There you go, you know. <clears throat> I got out of Army that year. Mm. Oh. I picked you up from Army. You picked me up from Army. Yep. You and Jay both. Yep. That's where I met that's you. That's the first time you met. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. That is yeah. the first time I met and, Paul. And, and Charles Band was there as well? Charles no. Band was there. No, Charles Band um, was several years later at a uh, at a convention. Oh, I thought I took the picture Arkansas. of you and Paul meeting Charles Band. That's why I'm not, not in the picture. did not take that picture. We'll, we'll post, we'll it post a below. picture on the website we of yeah. Paul, we'll Chris, it. and Jay so picking know. up Charles Band from Army. Yeah. <laughs> I would have picked up Charles Band from Army. Oh, yeah. It was Paul's yellow station wagon, and then we ended up sitting around, Chris and I, and uh, the singer of Paul and I's band, friend of the show, John Thompson, and we watched Jason Goes to Hell that very same yeah, night. Yeah, that same night. Wow, yeah. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cronin. Is it all right if I talk to Barry a minute? Here's your friend Jody. Yeah, it's me. I'm glad you showed up. I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be grounded. Uh, Barry Cronin. He's been in the shit, let me tell you. This kid, like, yeah. it's not even, I don't even know why this kid is in the movie, really. That's a great question. They keep leaving <laughs> they him outside on the curb. Leave, well, <laughs> well, he's wheeled in by his parents. So he, the kid's, <laughs> poor kid's in a wheelchair with burns on his face. He's got what? sunglasses he on. Burns? He's got sunglasses on, implying oh. he's blind. Okay. Yeah, and, from the fireworks. But, for, yeah. I guess from a fireworks accident with some other kids. But, oh, yeah, that's right. But he's Jody's yeah. friend. But none of this backstory matters at all, except when Uncle Sam creepily whispers in his ear, <laughs> even with your eyes closed, you see better than everyone else, or some bullshit. I'll make them all feel your pain. What is your name? Even in darkness, 
You can see me better than those with eyes. You know me. Everyone leaves this kid. Why did a creepy man put his hands on this kid in broad daylight? Because his parents left him to go do something else. What do they do with this kid in every single scene? Oh, we got to go in a house. Well, we don't have a ramp. I guess you'll just sit outside at night by yourself on the curb. <laughs> well, there's even a line. His dad is like, sorry, should have put you in the shade. Yeah. <laughs> like, this kid is exhibiting psychic powers. Like he can foretell the future. Who's Larry living? Cohen. Who's dying? <laughs> Larry Cohen oh, has, is very serious about social issues, uh, blind patriotism, and also handicap accessibility. And that's what this is about. So the kids are right. handicapped because he can see the future. They're coming now. Is there an actual implication in this movie? That Barry has some sort of psych, psychic power. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's what there he does is. the oh, whole is. fucking time. He like he's he is always like <laughs> Uncle Sam is you know nearby or whatever. Like he directly knows what's happening. He, has, he says he has killed again. Yeah, like yeah. he absolutely knows the future and is psychic. Someone's been killed. Event. We got some good music coming. Now, how did you know that? Congressman Cummings there are others. Is going to award the prize other dead the ones too. Followed. Sorry. We had. should have left you in the shade. I just get upset that they keep leaving him on the curb. Yeah. Like, at least three <laughs> times in the film. Even but, during, like, the cl- climax yes. of the film, when they go to do a thing, they cut... <laughs> Isaac Hayes comes back with that fucking cannon, right. and that kid is just sitting Do you think Isaac curb? Hayes picked up that kid, put him in the truck, went to get the cannon, came back, got the kid out, put him in the wheelchair, oh, and set God. up the cannon? No. 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 He left Hell him no. on the curb, he left drove on the away... Curb. So now, let's say Uncle Sam kills Jody in the house. He walks outside. That kid, that blind boy, is just sitting there as a target for Uncle <laughs> well, Sam with no Jay, one the around. the thing is, he would never have let that happen because he would have been able to tell if Uncle Sam were going to kill Jody or not. We don't have to run. Yeah. He won't hurt us. Um. Who? He talked to me. He touched me. Mike, you had a... Beautiful, beautiful rendition of the B-movie anthem at the top of the show here, and we all thank you for that. Uh, but I'm not but I'm not quite sure that it was as beautiful as Jesse's rendition of the national anthem that we get uh, <laughs> towards the end of this film. Clip goes here. He sings beautifully and then sings beautifully again in a different but deeper and more gravelly voice. You think that's William Smith? Are you thinking a. What are you talking about? Are you thinking the end credits? Are you thinking about the military poem at the during the end credits? Is that what no, you're talking about? No, that gross poem is not what I'm talking about. The kid <laughs> sings beautifully. He sings, uh, you know, oh, say, can he? It's a beautiful song. And then he ch- starts going, and the rockets red glare. Well, I mean, I you saw it in the that. clip. Yes, he fucking does. <laughs> Comment down below on our YouTube video if you liked Jesse's national oh, anthem yeah. performance. And then his butt cheek. Well, no, his butt cheeks don't come out. Yeah, Uncle we Sam really boxers. does not like boxers shown no. during the singing of his national anthem. <laughs> All right, so Abraham Lincoln gets killed. Um, people are getting killed Which left is, and right. Abe, Abe Lincoln is the boyfriend of Jody's mom. I yes. think that's right, lawyer. yeah. And the sheriff was... The Jody, uh, Uncle Sam's wife. Come on, am I gonna have to spend the whole day by myself? Don't give me the silent treatment, you. Also, the sheriff was a fucking creep. Like, fuck him. Well, I mean, bad for him, really. I mean. Did you? Well, I mean, the wife clearly wasn't into him, and he was just like, no Ralph. Okay, he's no Ralph. Ralph is the one saying, 
Isn't that the lawyer's name? Uncle. Oh, you mean Abraham Lincoln? Yes. Yeah. That's he's the lawyer who is with Jody's mom. mom? God, he sucks too. He does, man. and <laughs> purposely. He says things like, "If you'd show me more affection." Jody would show me more respect as he's yeah. like, mm-hmm. yes. oh, that how does so that good. translate? It doesn't. <laughs> it he does. leans in, he gets right up on her ear and he's like, if you show me some more, wait, no, he'd probably respect me more if you showed me some more affection. Burr. Burr. And then you're like, where's Uncle Sam? Can you stab this fucker yeah. quicker, please? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you start there rooting definitely for Uncle some Sam. T- times you're rooting for Sam to show up. You know, mm. Maybe he'd show me more respect if uh, you'd show me a little more affection. Um, not now, Ralph. Please, come on. There's a dead body in the house. You guys are not going to believe this, but I do have to urinate again. Um, oh, God. You've been so, waiting for this? Well, wow. I just, you know, I don't drink hardly ever. So when I do, it really goes through me. So... I want to challenge you guys. A little bit of a challenge here. A pee challenge. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I'm going to give you two notes that I have and mm-hmm. s- see if you can blow through both of these notes before I get done going potty. Does that sound fair? Oh, yeah. Potty. Sure. I think we're already All right. finished. All right. So here's the two notes, and then I'm going to take my headphones off and go. Note yeah. number one is... Congressman Robert Forrester gets blowed up. Note number two is Isaac Hayes teams up with the kids and go. Okay, well, we already did. Well, we already the, talked about the. Yeah, we yeah. talked about Forrester. So we're talking so about Isaac, Isaac Hayes, Hayes and the kids. Up with the kids. Hello, Whoa, Jerome. wrestling hero Ultimate Warrior is here now. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. Speaking Hi. of guys who uh, are problematic. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. Who, is there someone better, I should say? Well, if you're looking for problematic wrestlers, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, he's... He, he so was, Isaac Hayes teams up with yeah. Jody and the wheelchair kid and blow the <laughs> shit out of Sam's wife's house. Well, I would like, say teams up with Jody and they are forced to bring along wheelchair kid. That, well, they're Sadly. forced to leave wheelchair kid at the curb <laughs> at every stop they make. You know, okay, so real quick, though, because I want to I want to touch on, like, the coolest... What I feel is the coolest stunt of the movie that involves Isaac Hayes, mm, actually. Yeah. Oh. So they get to Jody's house, and Isaac Hayes is like, we got to call the serious state police to get in here and help us. So he goes into the kitchen, picks up the phone, and he looks over. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's the mask. And this is the first time that you see Sam unmasked. And it, it looks pretty cool. Mm. They have a really cool conversation back and forth. And time. And, oh, well, hold conversation's on. Conversation's over. Oh. And then what happens is uh, Uncle Sam takes Isaac Hayes and launches yeah. him <laughs> through a wall. Right through a and wall. I think it looks awesome. It's I thought great. they did a it's fantastic a job. Really cool stunt. You never fought for your country. You just kill for the love of killing. You nothing. So just die. Oh, John. Jay, it is very awesome. And I have a favorite stunt that is the reverse of that. He goes back through Weirdly. the wall? <laughs> wow. Yeah, he when, he goes, when he goes off. back through the wall. <laughs> Literally, at the very end of the movie, Isaac Hayes shoots a cannonball yes. into the oh, gut. Yes. And, and it, he, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Sam is on fire. And they must have taken so many takes of someone walking, of like being on fire in a fire suit. But they, he, he shoots him in the gut and then he just like, folds over in half and slow mo <laughs> on fire slams through the wall back into the house it's cool and it's yeah. and loved it and that house explodes fun. like 20 times yes, oh, yes. <laughs> the house it keeps exploding done that though. cannonball should have been nowhere in the public <laughs> Somebody say rating time. Rating, rating time. time. Bum 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 bum. Rating time. 
I am open to suggestions for any sort of rating. You know, if Country you guys... time lemonade in glass. Oh, okay, I was yeah. gonna go. I was gonna go glasses, no glasses. But Jay took that bit. Sorry. Well, look, you guys do whatever you want to do. I don't mind making the graphic. It's fine. I'm gonna fucking have my hands full with this episode once again. But <laughs> what I have written down because we do have Isaac Hayes in this movie and we do have Mike Hayes on this podcast. It's a little bit of Whoa. a Hayes Foundation situation. Ah, um, never forget. A little bit of a Hayes Dynasty situation almost, if you will. Um, so I'm just so, so the official rating system today is one out of a hundred Hayes's. But you can do an Isaac Hayes, you can do a Mike Hayes, you can do a Country Time Lemonade. You can really do whatever you want. I mean, it's, it is America, greatest country in the world. You can mm-hmm. do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, who to start with, though? Is there anyone who wants to, in in a very patriotic way, is there anyone who wants to volunteer to go first? I'll volunteer. Fuck it. Okay, Mike. <laughs> this movie's slow as balls at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And... When I rewatched it for the first time, I've seen it multiple times in the past, and I just forgot. But when I rewatched it for the podcast the first time, maybe I was a little drunk, and I wasn't having the movie. I wasn't having the slow. I was very unhappy about it. But when I watched it again, as you will do to make sure you're fully studied for the show, mm-hmm. it kind of clicked much. Not kind of. It absolutely clicked much better with me. Mm-hmm. It. Uh, I was. Um, mostly sober so you know i was able to dig into the you know the minutia of it the the little bits of the 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 commentary and the the social you know satire and whatnot going on and i enjoyed that a lot more this this second now mike when when you say mostly sober are we talking was the other part of that alcohol or was the other part of that maybe more of a like a Edible situation or... Eh, a little column A, a little column B. Mm. But, you know, what are you going to do? And and then what... But once... Once the... It's honestly... A lot of movies like this, it's once the killer starts doing the killings that it gets interesting, right? Like, wild things start happening, very thing. But honestly, what really makes this movie kick up in gear is when fucking... What's his name? The kid... The, the psychic kid shows up and starts being psychic, and it just takes it to another level Barry. of fun and weirdness, and I really liked that. And um, I feel a little generous today. Oh. You know... And stuff. So I'm going to say, and and it, and it is mostly because it's the number that makes sense for this rating, and it's not necessarily reflects my actual feelings. But I'm going to give it 76. Mm-hmm. Very patriotic Hayes of you, Mike. is drinking Country Time Lemonade on the golf course with Grampies. <laughs> <laughs> I did say whatever you want, so that is very fair, and that is very patriotic of you. Let's go with Chris Hudson, the veteran, the literal army veteran of the group yes. here. What did you think of this movie? Did you have any army flashbacks? You know, what's your take um, on this movie? I did. Um, all the army stuff is wildly inaccurate. Mm. Um, there's a whole scene of Uncle Sam taking the medals from uh, Jody's little ammo box that he's got and pinning them to his zombified chest. <laughs> that um, doesn't happen. And- well, it does happen, but, I mean, not only is it not a quarter inch above his pocket, it's on the oh. wrong fucking side. Oh. So, um, oh. they call him Master Sergeant Sam, whatever the fuck, uh, but his burial Class A dress uniform is a E6 rank mm. on it, so took me out, like, totally, totally yeah. off. But, you know, hey, the Chris, other guy... Chris, you know, for the, for the viewers and the listeners out there, just imagine what Chris just said... But, you know, Paul and I had just picked him up from Army. Chris and I lived together in an apartment. Imagine that kind of facts and details, but Chris is really, really drunk. And it's oh, like boy. midnight or one in the morning, right. and you're watching the movie for the first time, and Chris is saying these things over the film. Just that's that's really what the Chris Hudson experience it's the, is about. It's the sort of thing that people really don't get to experience enough in this country. And that's my main, that's really my biggest complaint about America. Okay. That I really was hoping this movie would solve, but mm, no. You 
know, it's it's got a good message. It can be fun once you get past all the boring bits. So I am going to give this a score of, well, we've used this rating scale before, but I'm giving it July 4th, Screeching Eagles. Ah. That's right. 7-4. Seven, 74 Screeching Eagles. <laughs> Do I have to put the audio of the screeching oh, eagle? Oh, of course, yeah. Of course. yeah. You can't. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Right, yeah. Nothing's Jay. more American than putting the audio of screeching eagles in your podcast. This is true. This is true. I feel like we're, so far, all pretty much on the same page. I mean, the first 35 minutes are real dry, uh, real slow. It you're, you're kind of waiting for Sam to show up and they give you little hints and flashes, you know, his fingers move in the coffin and whatnot. <laughs> uh, but the movie really kicks into gear once once he gets out of that coffin. So, but I did have fun with it. I mean, the movie's well constructed. It's It's got some creative shots. It's, like I said earlier, you know, I was impressed with how straight they played the the idea of the movie and how well it worked. Uh, so overall, I, I I did have fun with it. So I'm going to make this short because I agree pretty much with everything Mike and Chris said. Uh, and I'm going to go, and I had this written down, so we're we're just, all the little darts are lining up here. I'm going to give it 75 Destro's run over by tanks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that little guy. Look at him. Poor little Destro. Uh, I'll see if he can sit up here. And get him up there. Yeah. All right, I guess Paul, days. what do you oh, we think? Fell. Well, yeah, I will keep it short and sweet as well because uh, it is nice to see and hear that we are all on the same page with this one tonight for the video special. Um, there's something about this movie. It is slow. It is, you know, the the I don't know if the pacing is necessarily off. It just has a slow pace to it. Mm-hmm. But there's something about it that kind of keeps calling me back you know um maybe it's that lenticular case i don't know <laughs> which you can see on bmoviemania.com um but yeah it's 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 fun and it's got a little more depth to it than you would normally expect and came out in 1996 which is when i picked up chris from army so you know there's some there's a nostalgia factor there as well um, Mike stole it from me, but this is what I told myself I was going to do, and God damn it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> 76. Wow. Um, wow. Um, wow. I don't think anyone's done the official rating system yet of <laughs> Isaac Hayes or <laughs> Mike Hayes, so I will do... I'll, I'll combine them. I'll do Mike, Mike Zick Hayes. Mm. 76 Mike Zick Hayes. <laughs> this might be the movie that we are closest mm-hmm. to across the board. Yeah. Like ever. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The scatter graph is so <laughs> tight on this. Yeah. A, as they say in the army, that's a tight grouping. Oh, <laughs> there you go, listeners. Official army term. <laughs> Paul, yeah. Paul, you mentioned that lenticular case. Uh, I'm drinking from it right now. See? Oh, Wait. God. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B-Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They're touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B-Movie Mania. Uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a very oh. happy and a very safe 4th of July. Don't blow off your fingers. Keep all your limbs. Have a country, have, have a country time lemonade. Enjoy yourself a country time lemonade. Hey, Z.
is drinking Country Time Lemonade on the golf course with Grampies.